being socially isolated um, isn't too different from what we normally experience as composers. And, and so it hasn't been too difficult to, to work because this is a setup that I'm, that I think we're all used to, um, you know, locking ourselves away in our room and just working. <laughs> but there's a definite cognitive dissonance that I can't ignore. It's, it's hard to process all of the suffering that's going on right now. And it's, it just zaps me sometimes out of my, it's like a jolt. It, it just, it's like you forget about it for a period of time. You're getting in the flow and then you just think, oh, I, what am I doing here? I, I should be in Philadelphia. Like it's, it's, it's March, it's April, I, it's May, I, I shouldn't be here. And uh, so that's been something that I've had to process. And of course, just general worries about family and friends. But I think ultimately it's strengthened my resolve. It's, it's convinced me that what I am doing um, is very much needed, which I, I think is a thought that we always have. Otherwise we wouldn't be doing what we are doing. But I feel like now more than ever, um, what we're doing is very much needed. And so I know that a lot of composers have responded uh, to the crisis in their works by writing pathos-filled, um, grief-ridden works in an attempt to acknowledge what's been going on. Um, and I, I have been doing that, but I also feel that there also needs to be a sense of hope and aspiration, a yearning towards something better, um, some, a yearning towards better days ahead. So not a, a blind kind of joy or a saccharine sort of blind optimism, but something that acknowledges what, what's been happening, the tragedy that has been occurring while hoping for something better um, to create a sense of encouragement and um, a sense of unity.